All right, what is going on, guys? It is Adam A.K. Marf, and this is Marfugal News. Today is a call-in show. We're going to talk about a current events that are happening right now around you and across the globe. Be right back right after this. Nothing in the show should be considered legal, medical, or financial advice. The views of the callers can differ considerably and do not necessarily reflect my opinion, Dex's opinion, or anyone else who works with the show. You should always do your own research and consult with professionals. The internet is full of fake news, so please take everything with a grain of salt. If you have not already, it helps us out if you end up going through any of our affiliates, and it helps you out if you end up protecting yourself against cybercrime. NordVPN is one of the best and one of the easiest to use. If you do not have a virtual private network, it protects your IP address, which is your online identity, which actually connects to your real address and everything else. It also connects to you. If you know anything about how they are data logging and basically getting your profiles down, you can prevent that by having a VPN. Nord is, again, one of the easiest. Download it. It's like an on switch and off switch. All you have to do. Go to marfuglenews.com slash VPN. Not only will you get a giant discount on this, but you will also be helping us. I appreciate your support, and I appreciate everyone that goes through any of our affiliates. I uh, can't say thank you enough. All right. What is going on, guys? It is Adam A.K. Marf, and this is Marf Fugle News. Thank you guys for joining us on this beautiful day. At least here it is. Uh, again, at some places are suffering through extremely high heats. But if you are new here, we're going to go over current events. We're also going to be taking calls later, which will be at the number right down below me at 2244 marf I'll repeat that number again, uh, 2244 uh, later on when we get more people in. Uh, thank you for the first uh, thousand people or so that are that are uh, popping in, and thank you over on D Live, everybody that is watching. Uh, but again, if you are new here, somebody shared my show with you, and you don't know how it works, we're going to be covering the current events, and of course, we always have a bibliography. That way, you know exactly where we get this information from. All you have to do is click the first link right below the video show notes, and you will see that it will bring you to marfuglenews.com, where we have, of course, it all organized by thumbnail. You'll just look for today's thumbnail lights out. Our we next. Once you click on that, it will bring you to every single article, tweet, video, picture, document, art, uh, art, archived uh, piece there. It will all be there at your fingertips. Now, once you click on that, it will actually bring you to every single piece and more. There's actually overflow. The stuff that we couldn't fit in today's show into a two-hour time slot, that is all down at the very bottom. That's the stuff that is too far to one direction or the stuff that gets people going in circles and arguments. Uh, that stuff we keep down there. Uh, and, of course, we have a ton, a ton of great stuff down there. So make sure not to miss that. And then over on the right side, if you do want to grab any of the products that we talk about today, they're all affiliate products, which basically means when we show you them, we're showing you something cool. If you go purchase it, they give us a small commission. And in return, you get an awesome product at a discount and you're helping the channel and reinforcing our growth at the same time. All right. And, uh, you can also get email alerts. You can get notifications from us instead of getting them from the platforms three days late. So make sure to go over there, head over. It's a ton of great stuff. All right, let's bring in my co-host slash internet brother, Dex James. What is going on and how are you doing today? Well, hello, Adam, and hello, Fugle fam. I am fantastic. All right, so remember the number to call is 2244006273. If you forget, that number is right down below me anytime that this screen is showing. Uh, it says, why are hundreds of Grand Canyon tourists suddenly getting sick? This is a this is kind of a, a big trip here. It says, while hiking in Grand Canyon National Park, Christy Key came across a concerning sight. Four hikers resting on the side of the trail, looking a little worse for wear. It says, after learning that two of the hikers had spent the previous night violently vomiting, it said that Key offered to help uh, call a rescue team, but the group declined. But when she saw them sitting in the same spot on her return trip, Trip, with one of the hikers still spewing chunks, she knew it was time to call for help. Eventually, a chopper showed up, flying the nausea-stricken man to safety, but the experience stuck with Key, who told the Daily Beast that she was hiked hundreds of miles in the Grand Canyon and never has come across hikers whose illnesses were was unrelated to dehydration or heat until now. After once healthy member of the unlucky group fell ill, later that day, Key began to suspect that a virus was to blame. 
it's uh, apparently uh, and here's some of the photos from this uh, area and of course it's it's way out there so and if you can't walk or if you're you know it, they literally have to fly in there and grab you uh, they this is one of the persons that was uh, sick here it said Kia is not alone in her tale of a nauseous woe as the Grand Canyon National Park is currently experiencing an outbreak of gastrointestinal illnesses that closely resembles norovirus, a, a disease that can cause vomiting, diarrhea, cramping, body aches and mild fever, according to the uh, the the. Uh, cat, dog, and cat there. Normal virus is, of course, very contagious, and anybody can get infected. The disease can be spread through direct contact with an infected person, contact with a contaminated surface, or ingestion of contaminated food or drink from the park. And uh, uh, if somebody knows more about this and can explain how this is happening, it says, as of 10, uh, June 10th, the park knew of 118 people who have become with, uh, sick with gastrointestinal virus, as reported by Grand Canyon News. The infections have spanned 16 different trips on the Colorado River and the backcountry. Dax, just yesterday we were talking about the, the biblical plagues, and it's like everything is coming out right now. It says a majority of the illnesses were recorded in May, with the most recent case being reported on June 2nd, according to Jan uh, Bolsom, Chief of Communications, Partnerships, and External Affairs at the Office of the Superintendent at Grand Canyon. What a, uh, what a uh, name for a job. Uh, Ball, Chief of Communication Partnerships External Affairs at the Office of the Superintendent at Grand Canyon National Park. Man, that's a mouthful. We haven't we haven't seen something like this kind of outbreak in about ten years. So this has happened before. What a trip! Uh, as far as you go hiking and all of a sudden you get sick. Are they touching something? Are they picking up rocks? Are they uh, putting their hands or climbing up a rock or something and getting this thing? Uh, what a trip. What do you think about it? Have you had this sickness or do you know somebody who has? Give us a call at 2244-006273. Make sure to press option four once you get to our phone tree to get directly to Dex during the show. It says U.S. Supreme Court expands the bang bang rights, strikes down New York law. It says the U.S. Supreme Court on Thursday declared for the first time that the U.S. Constitution protects an individual's right to carry a hand bang bang in public for self-defense, handing uh, a landmark victory to uh, rights advocates in a nation deeply divided about how to address bang bang violence. It says the 6-3 ruling with the court's conservative justices in majority and liberal justices in dissent struck down New York State's limits on carrying concealed hand bang bangs outside the home. The court found that the law enacted in 1913 violated a person's right to keep and bear arms under the U.S. Constitution's Second Amendment. Well, seems like common sense. Now, I know that there are some of you that are against this, uh, but you have—I—I I, I think that the biggest argument, which is a cliche argument, is that criminals are not going to listen to any of these laws. And now, with the rate that is absolutely skyrocketing, anybody can get struck down in the middle of the street. It, there, it's kind of like you don't bring a knife to a bang bang fight, uh, and most people, uh, especially if you are disabled or something, else, there's just so many different uh, variables there that there's so many reasons. And that what's funny is people will use those same reasons on why it is right to say, you know, um, to rid yourself of a child. Right? There's t so many variables. Well, I don't know why that doesn't, uh, you know have a play into this as well because there are so many variables if it's a 90 year old man uh who's trained with it, it's been trained with it their whole life if uh if somebody comes up and, and mugs them they knock them to the sidewalk we've seen several uh just get knocked down to the sidewalk and die right there uh so that's been happening a ton in new york and specifically there's been a crazy amount of attacks uh watch any prepper that actually films from new york and in fact there was a prepper that actually just commented on my video and i was i was glad to find him uh, I think it's Angry Prepper or something like that, but he's in New York. I, I watched a few of his videos. He was really good. Uh, but he w was doing these street... Uh, he was basically walking down the street and and just telling how since CV, it's like all this stuff has gone down. He was pointing out, uh, of course, where people got uh, you know, taken out and where, uh, things happened. And he's like, this is just the last week. I ended up looking back at that video and I was, I was 
I, I ended up researching all of the people that he was talking about. And because at the time it was like a six month old video, I was able to find all of these things he was talking about. And they all made, uh, they all made like the local news, but none of them made national news. Of course not. Because they don't want, uh, they don't want you to realize that this is happening all over the place every single day. Give us a call if you have been affected by, uh, by that kind of thing. Let us know. 2244 Mark. And then John McVeigh's corpse still in Spanish morgue after a year uh, after his death. Kind of sus, uh, if, you, if you ask me. Uh, very, very sus. It says the body of the software entrepreneur John McVeigh remains in a Spanish morgue after his death as a legal case lodged by his family to demand further checks is yet to be resolved, authorities and his lawyer said. McAfee, who launched the world's first commercial antivirus software in 1987, was found perished, age 75, on June 23rd last year in his prison cell, a few uh, few hours after Spain's high court authorized his extradition to the United States on tax evasion charges. Now remember, this is... This is kind of what's going on with Assange right now. They're saying, oh, we've got this extradition. That's why we have predicted, well, he might end up, you know, goners or might end up something else. It's happened before and uh, it could happen again. It says the British American mogul had been jailed in the Barcelona area. Brian's to jail for eight months following his arrest after four years on the run from U.S. authorities. One thing that I don't think that anyone should rule out just because of how corrupt those systems are if somebody were able to pay enough money, he could have faked it. He could have actually, he could still be somehow alive. Uh, basically, they're telling us that there is no, uh, there's no physical body or the, the, I'm sorry, that the body is in this morgue and that they're fighting over it, right? Well, what if there isn't one? Autopsy determined he died by ta- unaliving himself. Uh, he even said, if if I go by this way, that it's not right. So it's just uh, pretty sus, if you ask me. And then Keith Dyke, thank you from Canada for your support. Thank you for the super chat. And then Mindy and Tammy Padgett, thank you for subscribing. Welcome to the Fugle Fam. I appreciate each and every one of you guys. Thank you so much for watching. All right, and then make sure to get your calls in early. Uh, First-time callers encouraged to call in on this or any other of the stories. And Mr. Gates, purchase of North Dakota farmland has locals livid. Well, I could see why. So many of you probably already know that he is the now, I believe, the largest farmland owner in the United States. He also is one of the largest proponents of uh, fake meat, which is kind of funny, which you're buying up the farmland so nobody else is using it to grow real stuff. And of course, you are trying to push the fake stuff. And people are pissed. It says an entity with ties to billionaire Billy uh, bought 2,100 acres of potato farmland in northern uh, northern North Dakota, prompting the state's top prosecutor to intervene after complaints from local residents. It says public records cited by AG Week show that the Gates-linked Red River Trust bought the farmland from the owners of the Campbell Farms, a potato farming group that is headquartered in Grafton, North Dakota, which is about 50 miles from the Canadian border. North Dakota Agriculture Commissioner uh, Doug Goering told KFWR that uh, the reaction to the purchase has been largely negative. It says, I've gotten a big earful on this from clear across the state. It's not even from that neighborhood. Those people are upset, but there are others that are just livid about this. Gates, the billionaire, tech mogul, and philanthropist. I love how they always have to put phil- phil- uh, philanthropist whose net worth was pegged by Bloomberg at $113 billion, has quietly amassed nearly 270,000 acres of farmland across the country. Do you realize how much that is? 270,000 acres. That is, that's incredible. What is he doing? The Microsoft co-founder is considered the largest private owner of farmland in the country with some 270,000 acres across dozens of states, according to last year's edition of the Land Report 100, an annual survey of the na- uh, nation's largest land owners. Uh, again, what, do you, what the hell does he need all of that land for 
other than does he know that it's going to be a city and he's investing in it now because they're about to expand into all of the cities. Uh, there will be no country. Everything will be fake in the future. One thing I know that I, I've talked to some folks in the Fugle fam that are all about, uh, I guess they're in investment experts and they're saying that they are going full bore into uh, fake meat. And the reason why is they say that there's no stopping it and that it is going to be the future. And I was just blown away by this. And they're having conventions. They're having all of these different meetings. Fake meat is going to come. And whether you like it or not, they are doing all of these uh, scientific experiments to even substitute meat. I've heard a couple fast food places even substitute it. Of course, you've, the Burger King has the Impossible Whopper or whatever it's called. But a few places actually substituted it without people knowing and then surveyed people afterwards. So a lot of these places are actually, you're, you're ordering a regular Big Mac or whatever it is, whatever uh, place it is, and you're eating a fake burger and people don't know it. So think about that. that it, this, is, this is a really creepy future that we are headed into uh, where you, you won't be allowed to eat real meat. Uh, even the president said that in, in, by 2030, uh, you'll be, there'll be something like where you're limited to eight ounces of steak a month where a steak in the future will be some sort of like glamorous treat, like a, a $4,000 bottle of wine or something. Uh, do you do you think that this is a good thing? Do you think it's a bad thing? Let me know in the comments or in the chat below. Spartan O Negative, thank you over on DLive. Kimbria says, Marf, Dex, and Mods for all you do. Thanks. Uh, f have a great weekend. Hey, thank you as well. And then uh, R. Tate, we've got Crack78. Chewy Weather and L. Russell, thank you for following me over on DLive. So what do you guys think? Let me know in the comments down below. All right, and I'm going to go over and check on chat. And then, of course, we're going to be... Uh, Cynthia S. says, I think it's biblical. I guess, it, it, does anybody else have any other reasons why he would be buying up all of this land? Do you think that he thinks that, that those are going to be cities and he's getting it before they turn it into cities or what? Uh, and then and it does nobody ever talks about his kids he has he has kids what do they do like what are they up to all right and then uh bible talk triple seven thank you about an hour ago doing a super thanks on the last show andreas binder thank you for your uh su super uh, uh super thanks over on the replay says donkey says thank you and then true news you can count on, Nika Tiaka. Thank you so much, and I'm glad that you made it to the show. All right, and then let's get this open and get the phone lines rolling. 2244 marf If you would like to call in, do so now. Looks like we have John, a.k.a. 5280 Skywatch, and actually he has a video calling from Colorado. Uh, Will you get John on the phone? I do want to remind everybody, if you haven't already, make sure to go over and check out EMP Shield. This is an actual way you can protect yourself against an EMP strike or even a CME. This is the same company that has uh, addressed issues with agencies like DHS, DOD, and of course on the Dempso team uh, protecting the Texas grid. If you want to protect yourself against all three phases of an EMP, you would go over and get one of these devices. Now, there's different devices for different things. They make one for your car, which is the most popular. They also make it for your house, for your generators, gas generators, solar generators. In fact, they even make one for the, the solar energy uh, solar generator. Uh, they also protect you against a Carrington level event, which it, we will actually talk about it uh, probably... I, I don't know if we actually it actually made in the show, uh, but I did get that the Wired article that talks about the sun and talks about the two scientists talking about how uh, CMEs and the whole pattern is now getting broken apart. People are finding out way more about the sun, and it's not good. We're in cycle 25, and what that means is not uh, not great uh, great odds for 23, 24, and 25. So if you do want to protect yourself, you can go and do so at marfuglenews.com slash EMP. Not only will you get $50 off per device, but you will also be helping reinforce the growth of the channel. So thank you guys for helping. And, and again, uh, thank you for uh, going over and checking them out. All right. And then Dex, let's uh, get John on the phone. John, you're live on Marfugal News. Yes, sir. How's it going? So, so Can you, you hear me? Yes. I'm going to pull up your video right now, 
And uh, can you explain what Please we're going to be, what we're looking at? Yeah. All right. So well, I've been on your show before. I have been studying the sky for well over 10 years, filming it, photographing it. And um, I don't want to say too much to get your channel in trouble, but you know, we've got these, these airplanes in the sky that people like to talk about. If you know what I'm saying? Yes. The, um, mosquitoes. Yep. <laughs> all right. Well, they're poofing all I've over been screaming for years that they're a hoax. Yeah. I've, I've been screaming for years that it's a hoax. And a lot of people don't like to hear that. And, um, cause there's so many people that believe that this is a real thing. Well, I have filmed them over and over again, thousands of times. And, uh, I know that these things are not real. They're images being projected into the sky. And, um, this is the best video I've got. It was about a week ago. If you go to about three minutes of this video, this thing goes through my the frame. I've, I've got my camera hooked up to the telescope. I'm filming the moon, and this thing flies right through my frame, and it's it gets paused, zoomed in on. This is 100% without a doubt not real. It is a holographic image being projected in the sky just like all the rest of them. So it, 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 it's an image being projected of a 747. There's an engine missing. Uh, there, everything is not, the whole bottom of the plane is not symmetrical. So, so you're, here it's going to be coming up here pretty soon. So you're, uh -oh, all right. you're we, saying you're, you're zoomed in. There it went. It, gonna... So this is through the telescope. It flies through and then you keep letting it play. I uh, screenshot it, zoom in. And you can clearly see that this is not a real aircraft. Yeah, and just let it just let it play because I'm gonna end up uh, in the video. It gets uh, screenshot, and uh, you'll you'll see exactly what I'm talking about here in a second. Oh, so you're saying like the 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 second engine from the right is like like see through or something or? It's missing it. That's it. That's it's like engine two and a half. <laughs> yep. There you go. So there's a screenshot of it, uh, going through the frame of the camera, through the telescope. And there is no landing gear. There's nowhere for landing gear to come out. The, I call them pontoons there on the bottom are not symmetrical. The missile looking things or whatever you want to call those under the wings, there's some missing and I, I did some studying on planes with four engines and the only really passenger plane to be flying around here is a 747, which this is, uh, I think that's what it's supposed to be. So but do you see how it's not symmetrical? So what you, well, yeah, the left one is smaller than the right one. And then that, but right. and could that be the shadow of the, that's such a weird shot too, because you're so zoomed in and you're so, um, uh, because, uh, I forget what they call it, but as far as you are zoomed in, seeing the moon that close and then a plane just happens to right. go right through. What a trippy shot. And then look at the right well, that's side. Actually the, yeah. I, and you know, and it's not just this, I have filmed so many of these, uh, images in the sky. I've known for years that this is what they are and that they're not real. And this is just, just this past week, I happened to have this happen. And this is the best shot I've got ever gotten of one. What's weird to me is, you know, the lines There's on the back nothing. of the, the wing, there's yeah. four on the left. And then yeah. one of them is right next to the plane right. on the other side. There's not one. That's kind of uh, right. funky. And they're and they're different size. They're even smaller on the on the right side than they are on the left. And if you look up a 747, if you like if you google images of 747s from the bottom, uh you can clearly see that this is what is being uh it's being projected as a 747, but it's not uh they they didn't even get it right. This is just like that somebody did a half you know what job <laughs> this is just crazy. And I have many other images and video of, of these things with a wing missing, engines missing. And then not only that, the, um, the things that they boof, they do not change their shape when they're in the, in the sky, which tells you that 
if the wind's blowing, they would change their shape and disperse. They say this thing is an aerosol. There, there is no aerosols. It is 100% a huge hoax. I, I have studied and studied up on these things. Well, I, I, again, there's a think? there's a whole crowd. <laughs> I, well, I think the videos uh, definitely very interesting to say the least i just to make something off the spot i think right. it's weird that there's a missing kind of line there uh definitely fascinating right. what we're going to do is we're going to put this over on marfuglenews.com so people can go and investigate it for themselves and then people can go over and check out your channel at the Please same do. time well john Please do uh, you know um if it if anyone wants to know the truth about the sky, go to my channel. I Everything I put out and talk about, I prove. It, it, it all sounds quite crazy, but I prove everything I talk about. I, I, I photograph the film, or I, I photograph the sky on a daily basis, day and night, and uh, I have a lot of knowledge about it. Well, John, we're going to send people over, and again, this video is available if you want to go and investigate John's video firsthand and go frame by frame. You're welcome to go do so. Uh, it will be under caller info. Uh, John, thank you for calling in today, and I appreciate you. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. I thank you for everything you do, Adam. All right. Well, Thanks thank you, John. Me. I appreciate that. Uh, Dex. Uh, hey, Adam, I got a, an image I was going to show you that I just found. You want to pull it up? All right, sure. Let's see. Coast Guard near... Okay, wait. Okay, that's that. So so this image is and somebody in chat, and I'm trying to see uh, Jeremy Taylor in chat said, look this up. Okay. One second. So while you're pulling that up, this is a C-17 from underneath. It's got the same shape. So that might be a military aircraft that's being uh, depicted in that image. Oh, weird. Somebody was able to find... Weird. That it's, it's I guess, perspective is, is super weird. Even in that photo, it looks like... Uh, the one fin looks different than the uh, one on the right. And then you have, weird, the one is closer to the body than the other one. So are those fuel tanks on the bottom? Is that what that is? So it looks like he, he either, if whether it's a military plane or a, a projection of one, either way it looks like that's what uh, plane it is. That looks almost exactly like it. So maybe that why that's why it would be in a weird area, military activity that uh, that's not there. Look at that. Oh, and it doesn't have. You can't see anywhere where the. Uh, where does the landing gear? Oh, it's it, really those hard things to on see. the side. That is the landing gear. Sorry, those are the compartments where the landing gear is. I can give you another image that'll show you that. No, I I know what you're talking about. And then in the very very front, you can see there's a little line where the front wheel comes out. What a crazy looking plane. Either way, it's a good catch by John if you guys want to go over and check out his video. Look at that. Those things are massive. That's just a jet. Um, how did you find that picture so quick? Jeez. All right. Um, let's move back into the news. We have massive blackout hits Mexico's Yucatan Peninsula. This is yet another massive electricity knockout. Uh, a massive electricity blackout hit Mexico's resort-studded Yucatan Peninsula Wednesday, leaving as many as 1.3 million customers with power. <laughs> I, I like they totally screwed this up. <laughs> uh, leaving 1.3 million customers with power. <laughs> they forgot to put without. <laughs> It says the blackout affected almost two-thirds of households in the states of Yucatan, Capiche, and Quintana Roo, where resorts like Cancun and Tulum are located. The country's Federal Electricity Commission said that the blackout was caused by an accident involving an employee doing maintenance work on a high-tension line. It said that the worker survived and is being treated at a hospital. It says the commission said power had been restored to about 36% uh, of the households affected, 
It was the latest embarrassment for the government power utility, which President Andres Manuel Lopez Obrador has made a priority of promoting. It says that Lopez Obrador has tried to say, slave off uh, in in roads by private electrical generation plants, many of which use renewable energy and are cleaner than the commission's old plants that burn f uh, fuel oil. Lopez Obrador has angered private and foreign investors by giving government-owned plants priority in electricity purchases. So, first of all, they are just basically saying that one man caused a blackout to 1.3 million people. Do you guys realize how big of a power outage that is? 1.3 million without power. Do you think that's even possible with one dude, uh, even if he shocks himself on one of the main, I, I guess? I mean, if Dex, would that be a, like a, one of the main... Uh, at one of the main boxes or something, shocking himself. Like that's that's kind of wild. Yeah, I I don't know. That sounds sounds like a lot though. So one of the questions I I would like people to ask themselves is, as far as a lot of the things that have gone on, there was a previous ten million people were out of power in Mexico, and that one was under suspicious uh, circumstances, and that was around another one that happened in Venezuela. And another one in the I country. There were plenty of these that happened in a short succession last year. And many had something to do with hacking. And some thought that it was practice for a bigger event. Uh, there are parts of the Mexican actual grid that I, I want to say they were connected. But either way, they are the same, they're the same technology. As far as we have here in the United States, the same kind of power grid... Uh, that most other places have, and it's very, very outdated. I mean, for one, the science didn't change much for a long time. They did improvements on a lot of it, uh, but a lot of it is basically it was vulnerable. So, and now we are completely and utterly inundated and, and completely uh, now connected with the Internet. Everything is connected with the Internet and having everything under control remotely. It's a scary thing to think about, about losing power here or anywhere. As summer goes on, they are already telling us that our grid is at strain, that there is going to be problems re regarding heat. Over the last few days, there have been even more uh, places that are doing rolling blackouts. One question you should ask yourself is, are you ready to not have power? And I mean for long term. This is something that we have talked about many times. And people really need to be paying attention uh, to what stocks they have and what kind of water they have at all times. The thing is, is a lot of people will get extra stuff and then it will end up being used or it will dwindle or you'll end up grabbing something out of your stash and now it's, it's lower. This is something that preppers do constantly. You always... Uh, kind of relook at everything that you have and make sure that you have enough. It seems like something is going on worldwide and and that will come into play later on in the show. Uh, but again, just put that question in your head and then call us. If if your city is having a rolling blackout and nobody's talking about it, let us know. Call me, 2244 marf and then Vlad crimps gas flows just as Europe races to stock up for winter. And then Dex, I, I uh, closed the one between this and the uh, power outage. I don't know if you can grab the link for me, but it was uh, before Vlad crimps gas flows. It says Germany's largest storage, cha uh, storage chamber of natural gas stretches underneath a swath of farmland the size of nine soccer fields in the western part of the country. The bucolic area has become kind of a battlefield in Europe's effort to defend itself against a looming gas crisis driven by uh, Big Bad Vlad. It says since last month, the German government has rapidly been pumping fuel into the vast underground site at Redden, uh, hoping it would fill it in time for the winter when demand for gas surges to heat homes and businesses. The scene is being repeated at storage facilities across the continent in a jousting over energy between Europe and, of course, Vlad. 
It says that has been escalating since Moscow's invasion of UKR in February. In the, st in the latest sign that Moscow appears intent in punishing Europe for sanctions and military support for UKR, uh, Gazprom, the Vlad state-controlled energy giant, last week cut by 60% of the amount of gas it delivers via Nord Stream 1, a critical pipeline serving Germany and other countries. It is not clear if the throttling is a precursor for a complete cutoff. Now, by the way, they actually said it was technical difficulties at first. That's what they said it was. Uh, but at the levels that they were cutting it off, it's pretty hard. That's kind of like one guy knocking power up for 10 million people or 1.3 million people, right? Uh, so something here is definitely on on uh, a, a path. And all across the, I guess, all of the allied countries, we've had all of these strange events happening. Uh, power cables being cut underwater, uh, sensors and plants having all sorts of issues, uh, electric plants having weird explosions. Uh, you're having, uh, of course, uh, some of the nuclear power plants have had issues and attempted hacks, but a lot of it is not reported to the public. As I said, in the NERC report of last year, they told us that there were over, in a, a seven-year period, there were over 700 attacks, five, I'm sorry, five-year period, there were over 700 attacks or different events that have happened to our United States here, Grid, and only two events were reported to the media. The rest, all of them were reported to the Department of Energy, but none were reported to uh, the public except for two separate hacks. And that was only a small percentage of the actual things that have been going on. So it's crazy. It's like sometimes when you lose your power or your gas or something like that, you're probably not going to know whether it's a natural thing or a storm or if it's an actual hack. They're not going to tell us. That's why I say be prepared for things. But if you're, we have a lot of viewers in Europe. Uh, of course, you are already feeling this. A lot of places uh, are honestly worried that they're going to be completely cut off from gas. What's crazy is that right now, Big Bad Vlad, the entire world is saying he's the, the new, you know, uh, new NAZI, right? But at the same time, they're still getting gas from him. You'd think even if you suffer, you just cut that off right there and then. But they're still, they're going to, they're saying they're going to cut it off. Meanwhile, all of his allies are actually grabbing six times, uh, three times, two times, three times, six times the amount of gas and fuel uh, from them to make up for it. So they have skirted completely around sanctions, and now uh, they're possibly going to cut off Europe. I, I do think that this is probably going to happen. And that's hearing from people from Europe and from, of course, the military that say that this is kind of, this is down the road no matter what. But we'll see. We always got to take everything with a grain of salt. It says, if the storage facilities are not filled by the end of summer, the markets will interpret that as a warning of price spikes or even energy shortages, a director at Eurasia Group uh, political risk firm said. So, uh, of course, gas prices are extraordinarily high, about six times what they were a year ago. This is already bad. It could get a lot worse. That's why people need to prepare. Germany's finance minister uh, has warned that the persistently high energy costs were threatening to plunge Europe's largest economy into an economic crisis. And the government has called on consumers and companies to conserve gas. There is a risk of a very serious economic crisis because of the sharp increase in energy prices, because of supply chain problems, and because of inflation. Isn't it crazy that here in the U.S. the same thing is going on in all of the different allied countries? Canada, Australia, Europe, the U.S. All sorts of places are, and everywhere is divided by you're either on this side or you're on this side. Doesn't matter if they what language they speak. There's like the redneck hicks and the the you know hoity toity. Oh, we we're woke. It's it's absolute insanity going on across the across the uh, the whole whole place here. Cooter, the disabled veteran, thank you for your support, and as always, thank you for your service. Mindy Bowman, Mike Adams is saying that the diesel engine oil shortage will collapse society by November. Uh, so. Again, I haven't seen uh, some of his recent stuff. The last video I saw was about three weeks ago. Uh, but, man, there's a lot going on. 
Uh, Brett Butler, as a West Texas farmer, I can tell you that this winter is going to be rough. We are using half the fertilizer, and most farmers in the area failed 75% of crops already. Prep up, fam. So that's Brett Butler, a direct Texas farmer, telling us uh, that it's going to be rough. They're using half the fertilizer, and all of, all of their friends in farming are 75% failed crops. That's not good. If, if that is uh, true for a lot more places, then we are in real trouble. Survival living. Control the food. Control the pop. Also, look into gov officials that have major stock in cultured meats. The fake meats. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Uh, if, w- think about this. They... They're not making they're not making great crazy money off of these uh, you know country farmers here. They want to be able to mass produce it. They want to be able to make it in a factory. Uh, Melissa Singalas and not have any of the the downsides of farming. The thing is, is meat and farming and stuff. It has a lot of downsides. They have to deal with actually you know butchering and doing all this stuff. They want to put it in a petri dish and have it grown. And then mass produce on on uh, lines. They don't care if it tastes the same. I don't think they care about the the environment either. They just care about money. That's the overall thing. the The thing that it just keeps going back to is this all comes down to money. The last three years, money. Who's making royalties off of these things? Think about it. Ninja Squirrel. I'll think I'll call next time. Think talk to the fam. Hey, Ninja Squirrel, it's nice to see you, by the way. I, I love, uh, always, your name makes me smile. Melissa Signales, thank you so much for your support. Appreciate that. And then everybody else that just popped in. All right, uh, Dex, it looks like we have our next caller lined up, but I do have that. Uh, did you get that article in uh, Screener? I think you probably already did, huh? The one in between, uh, the one in between Vlad gas flow and then the uh after the mexican power outage sorry adam i i did not hear your request what exactly are you looking for oh that's okay you were probably on the phone um i need the uh the article that's between russia crimps gas flows and then uh massive blackout it uh, it ended up getting closed so uh, i'll i'll go back to it and then uh, what I will do is I'll I'll just go we'll go to the caller and then well the caller's on we, I got it if we, you want it right now okay thank you and then we have Patrick on deck uh, Coast Guard Island near the Bay Area strange observations calling from California and thank you Dex I appreciate that we have so many awesome people in the audience the, some of you guys crack me up I can't even repeat what you say but it's hilarious make sure to watch the chat if you're watching the replay all right and then uh we have is that the one you're looking for yes we have really funny people in the audience here all right vlad and g i nato's arctic achilles heel it says no this is not some time warp soviet settlement lost in the arctic waste but a corner of norway where Moscow can theoretically at least mine, build, drill, and fish what it likes. It says, Welcome to Spitsbergen, the largest island of the Svalbard archipelago and NATO's Achilles eel in the Arctic. It says these spectacular islands of glaciers and mountain peaks halfway between Norway and the North Pole are a strategic and economic bridgehead, not just for Moscow, but also for Beijing. It says all because of one of the most bizarre and little understood international treaties over uh, ever concluded, which gives Norway sovereignty, but allows the citizens of 46 countries to exploit the island's potentially vast resources of an equal footing. It says, which is why 370 uh, Vladians and UK Aryans miners from the Donbass work in Bodrensburg, a cutoff corner of Spitsbergen, uh, where the Soviets dug coal for decades and where it's pitch dark for nearly three months of the year. Spitsbergen has been covered with uh, Vladian sweat and blood for centuries. Of course, according to uh, Sergei Gushin, Moscow's consul, it says, I'm not arguing that it's not Norwegian territory, but it's part of Vladian history. Uh, 
He makes no attempt to hide that from some UKRs that have left since Vlad invasion of, uh, in February. It says Moscow has long wanted a bigger say in the archipelago, which has been a haunt of its hunters, whalers, fishermen since the 16th century. It says, uh, by the way, the sign here, this picture, which is a recent one, says a sign in Vlad country in says declares communism is our goal before a bank of Russian flags in Barentsburg. Uh, that was a mining settlement in Spitsbergen. It says it also insists on calling the islands by the original Spitsbergen rather than the Norwegian Svalbard, uh, the official name since shortly after the treaty handing them to Norway was signed in uh, 1920, while Vlad, uh, Vladia was otherwise engaged with the civil conflict between the Reds and Whites. Um, now, this is, pretty, this is pretty important. So we've talked about before, we're over there in this area. There's actually, there was a weird event that happened, and there was these underwater cable things that actually, not only uh, they're like radar systems that detect things in the water, uh, but they also, uh, they are kind of a first warning system when Vlad submarines go through. That was, that was basically dragged and destroyed by something, and it looked intentional. That was last year. It said nuclear submarines from Vlad's powerful northern fleet also have to pass close to Svalbard's southernmost Bear Island to get into the North Atlantic. Vlad's main interest is to avoid a situation where others use the islands offensively, said political scientist Erlid Mo of Norway's Fridtjof Nansen Institute. To make sure that that, that, uh, that happens, they maintain a reasonable presence and they are very attentive to what is going on, he added. After failing to get joint authority of the islands at the end of WW2, uh, Vlad is now pushing, without much success, for bilateral consultations to lift the brakes on its activities. So something is going on up there and they're trying to, to do more. But with no road to the capital long here being, uh, visitors have been coming to Barentsburg by boat or snowmobile, depending on the season, to admire what decades of Soviet showpiece on the western side of the Iron Curtain. Barentsburg holds it onto its Soviet relics not because we still have hope for communism, but because we value our heritage, and tourists also like taking pictures of themselves with them. So pretty crazy stuff is going on up in the Arctic and we are going to continue to follow it, see if anything else pops off. All right. And then, uh, well, we get, looks like we have Patrick on the line. Make sure to give us a call at two, two, four, four, zero, zero Marf. Do want to remind everybody, if you haven't already, make sure to go over and get your prep over at marfuglenews.com slash prep. You can get long-term survival food. You can also get water filtration, air purification, survival gear, cooking gear, and all sorts of other great stuff. Uh, mainly, though, if you do not have actual freeze-dried long-term survival food, it is a really great idea because it can last for years, and it's very easy to make, it tastes great, and it's from a good company. This company actually has a full selection. Meanwhile, a ton of companies are running out everywhere. Uh, freeze-dried foods in itself are becoming hard to find now. So you definitely want to get them if you've always wanted to get yourself a, uh, you know, some sort of one-month supply or three-month supply or even just an emergency kit for 72 hours. Uh, I would highly recommend doing it uh, now rather than later. The prices are only going to go up with inflation, with everything else that's going on, but also uh, it's going to be harder to find. So again, go over there, check it out. And also, if you don't trust what's in your water, I would highly recommend checking out the Alexa Pure Pro. It is a professional gravity-fed water filtration system that can get rid of 99.9% .9 of contaminants. Go to marfuglenews.com slash prep. Again, uh, the three-month supply of food is actually $150 off when you use that code. So make sure to go check it out. All right, let's get Patrick on the phone. Patrick actually has... Uh, some strange observations happening uh, with the Coast Guard, or at least the Coast Guard Island. Patrick, you're live on Marfugal News. And it looks like he's trying to get in here. Admire, Adam. I'm sorry? I, I said I had an error trying to get Patrick. I'm trying to get him on. I apologize. Oh, okay, no worries. 
<clears throat> and then coming up next, we're going to be talking about to avert Vlad growing in uh, influence. EU urged to pay more attention to the Balkans. We'll hit that. Uh, Big Easy a Patriot, thank you for subscribing. Uh, me, Puppet 007, Marf, diesel engine oil shortage within e eight weeks, one year to replace oil. Send you a Twitter DM and email. Shout out to the mods. Yeah, so that uh, they were talking about, uh, I got to go check out that video. A lot of people are talking about Mike Adams' uh, videos on that. And Adam, Patrick is now live. All righty. All right, Patrick, you're live on Marfugal News. What's How's going on? How's it going, Adam and Fugal fam? It's a great honor to uh, be here talking to you guys tonight. Well, it's nice meeting you. And, and uh, so you had some strange observations. Can you tell us about that? Yeah, so I'm a Bay Area native. I've been living in the Bay Area my entire life. Coast Guard Island is kind of near. It's in between Alameda and Oakland, and it is pretty much the biggest Coast Guard base in California. Um, they run a couple of central um, uh, intelligence gathering uh, or integrated support commands through it, too. Um, and they have about four cutters that are stationed out of that location. Uh, typically, you know, and, and it's and it's just kind of funny because I started kind of following your guys' show right after, you know, the whole conflict started kind of happening. And. You know, just as I was kind of listening to your show and listening to some of your other people, I started kind of thinking, yeah, you know, maybe I should just kind of check around me and just kind of be observant. Um, and typically, like the image you have up on the screen right there, from my location, I can see all three of those cutters uh, stationed right there at the dock. Typically, though, there is only one to two typically at the dock at a time. There are other two are usually... I'd assume out on patrol or doing some sort of mission. One of them that's actually stationed there is the famous cutter that uh, everybody knows of because uh, the Coast Guard guys jump on the, the narco sub. Um, that famous video. That was the the cutter that these uh, or the, these these uh, sailors were on. Um, today I drove past and I saw three cutters sitting there. Uh, typically. 750 and 751 usually have been sitting there pretty consistently. They don't really move much. And from my observations, now I'm not a, a marine expert. I don't know much about ships. Um, I have done a little bit of studying and gotten involved because it's something that actually does kind of interest me. Um, typically, though, those two, those two ships, 750 and 751, have to me looked like they've been sitting there being repaired for quite a while. Um, just today when I, when I went past again to both ships were freshly painted. So clearly indicating to me that they are getting these ships ready for, for something. Um, I'm not sure why all of a sudden now they've decided to, to kind of clean them up and get them all ready too. Um, but one of them in particular is a, a ship with some pretty significant capabilities and, and, uh, uh, W's on board. Um, What's also kind of interesting, too, is uh, amongst this time, I've been noticing more uh, helicopter patrols by the Coast Guard kind of going into a more eastward direction, um, which, if you know anything about the, the Bay Area, is there's all sorts of submarine cables all over the Bay Area to kind of prevent people and prevent other other actors from coming into our harbor. And even where I, I am, there is a very clear... There are submarine cables don't pass at this depth, at this, blah, blah, blah. And they, they're, they're very clear about that stuff. So these helicopters could just be scanning for, for any number of things. They could be going out on search and rescue missions because they know that the Coast Guard helps with that. Uh, but typically, the two helicopters I've seen most consistently are the MH60 Jayhawk and the MH60 Dolphin. The Dolphin is the, typically the one that everybody uses for, uh, for search and rescue and for water, uh, water rescue, um, cause that's kind of what it was designed for. But I have seen the Jayhawk and the Jayhawk kind of looks more like a standard military helicopter that everybody kind of, uh, kind of knows. So just some, some observations I've, I've kind of picked up and noticed in the last, uh, uh, well, since, since everything kind of happened over over there 
So, and just to clarify, these are the ice cutters, right? They they can go into. Is that what you are saying? Is, that is correct. Yeah. So these yes, these, these are ships, these are these are the they bounce up and down and they they can break icebergs, right? I don't know if they can break icebergs. I do know that they have been stationed out in Alaska before. All four of these ships. So I know that they can kind of do something like that. I do know they have some significant capability. Basically, they I believe some of these ships can go where no other ships can go because of that. And uh, they have a very sharp hole, but they also have a different shape. or And they have a different ability to be able to bounce and kind of break the ice like a hardened hole. Uh, but maybe I'm wrong, and you guys can correct me if I'm wrong. Either way, these these are something. If they're, I, I just wonder the thing that gets me. You know, they they re up and and try to make things look nice and things, uh, but also they do paint uh, any kind of military or any kind of coast guard stuff before it's actually utilized. They usually try to paint it for what it's going to be used for, or they'll recoat it and get it going. Uh, and partly, I found I heard yeah. that in uh, WW2 they painted a lot of stuff. They would give it a fresh coat of paint. Uh, uh, some of it was for morale. I've heard that it, it kind of goes back to that for tanks and things, and they would they would freshly paint it, so they would be going out and basically like like when you always feel better after you get a car wash, right? I don't know. Uh, either way, though, I'm hoping well, that there's nothing uh, coming our way. Well, it's really interesting that you say that too, is because the several the first times I kind of started observing these vessels, I noticed that they looked like they were in a state of disrepair and they were affecting my morale looking at these boats. Yeah. Basically like, Oh, that's what's protecting us. Or that's the, those are, uh, th those don't look too good. Yeah. And there also looked like there was uh, some hole damage on one of them too. And so that's what kind of, when I, when I drove past today and I saw that everything was kind of cleaned up on the boat, I kind of, that, that, that pricks my ears up. Yeah, it would it would mine as well. Well, good catch, and uh, again, keep watching and and keep observing because this is what we should all be doing. If it's if it's public and in our face, then we should be knowing about it. I think that if we kind of try to put the pieces together, we can most likely figure out a lot of this. Again, uh, there are some things that we just won't find out until after it's done. Right now, we are being lied to on a daily basis and that's obvious because honestly anything classified that basically means well we're lying to you and it's legal so we'll we'll see uh we'll see what happens with this but yeah thank you for calling in patrick and and again keep your eyes open and head on a swivel thank you and i really appreciate appreciate everything that you adam dex and the mods all do for for this community i really appreciate it and it's been a very welcoming community and i appreciate that well, I'm glad you feel that way, and make, make sure to push that on. When you're in chat, or if you pop in, make sure to tell others, too. And then if you bring somebody, make sure to let them know. Like, you know, just push positivity, and uh, even though we're looking at a really horrible world, we can at least find some solutions to it. And uh, if, you, if you do look at it in the right way, you might even be prepped up and be comfortable while other people are not so much. So that's the whole point of prepping. Well, thank you, Patrick, and, and uh, nice meeting you, and I hope it's your first time call. Don't make it your last, okay? Thank you. I won't. All right. Bye, Patrick. That was Patrick from California. Essentially, his place looks out at this, uh, this island, uh, Coast Guard Island, and obviously lots of Coast Guard stuff goes down and, and rescue helicopters and things like that. Um, essentially said that the, if you just joined us that the activity has gone up they just freshly painted all the boats and uh, repaired them and got them ready to go so we'll see what happens um, and then back to the news let's see here to avert Vlad's growing influence EU urged to pay more attention to the Balkans uh, Dex, actually, I, I was going to pop you in here for a second and have you talk about the uh, European Union and the Balkans and what's going on there. Are you able to 
pop in? It looks well, like. Well, yeah. Hey. Um, so one thing that is coming about is I think we're getting close, if not already there, where UKR is going to be accepted into EU. I think that happened uh, either today or it's happening today, uh, which sort of goes hand in hand with um, what they're talking about. Why, why they're saying the EU needs to, you know, pay more attention to those uh, countries, uh, all of those border countries. And, you know, what more can, I think what they're trying to do is, you know, nation build or at least ally build, which kind of goes exactly against what we reported yesterday when G was saying, hey, you guys knock that off. That's not a good thing. If, you know, th this is not the opportunistic time for people to be doing nation building uh, coming in, in, you know, because of this UKR event, right? Um, so we're, we're going to see uh, this continue, um, whether it be uh, NATO or whether it be the EU or both. Uh, we've out, you know, we have the two countries uh, up north that we're trying to come in, Finland and Sweden, I believe, trying to come into NATO. Uh, we've got UKR trying to do both. Uh, and I believe they're being welcomed into uh, EU uh, soon, if not, if, if it didn't already happen today. So um, interesting developments for sure. Well, we uh, with all of the partnering that's going on, we'll follow it, and we'll, of course, anything that's weird or sticks out, we always point out. And then Vladian troops in UKR face extraordinary casualty rates, UK intelligence. So this is actually coming from UK, not the UKR, um, which, uh, as I've said many times, a lot of the stuff that we're getting is directly from UKR. It's coming straight from... Uh, the apparent victim of this invasion uh, when re in reality that we haven't ever kind of looked at them as the you know forefront of journalistic uh, integrity so lots of things that have been said it's kind of like you got to take with a grain of salt same with UK though UK has put out some stuff that obviously uh, didn't ring true but actually the stuff that was this year rang true but it was late so it says that UK intelligence says uh, that they are facing extraordinary casualty rates. UKR soldiers uh, inspect the wreckage of a destroyed Vladian armored column at the road. Uh, it says casualties among the Vladian and pro-Vladian forces are mounting at an unsustainable rate in UKR. British intelligence reports raising more questions about the extent to which Moscow can maintain its current pace of operations amid limited progress on the battlefield. So one thing to think about is if this is true and they are truly losing all these people, then they might shift their uh, they might shift on how they do this. So they might go in there with missiles. They might uh, escalate things or this is complete BS from the equivalent of like, you know, our our intelligence puts out stuff, CIA and all of this stuff. They all put out false information. Uh, and I'm not saying that to you know, say something that's not true. We know over however many years since its uh, inception, uh, intelligence agencies have put out information on purpose that they knew wasn't right to throw people off or to do something or to take uh, eyes off of this and put it onto that. So I don't know if this is, you know, I, I just take everything with a grain of salt as far as this goes. Uh, everyone is making them look like an idiot again. When they start making vlad look like he's taken land and he's winning it's like r magically right after they do that they go oh we're sending more money we're sending more stuff and then right after they get the stuff oh they're they're losing it they're uh, losing again they're bumbling idiots they don't know what they're doing this is vlad country okay this country is one of the toughest countries in the world i'm not saying that to put them on a pedestal i'm saying it, you don't underestimate a, an enemy like them you don't this is the bear don't poke the bear right People have been afraid of them for a reason. They've gone; I, their soldiers have gone through tough times. If even if you, uh, I, I'm sorry, but people that say otherwise, it's like okay. Even here, if you walk into the ghettoest part of town and you start yelling at. You're not going to just start yelling at people. You'll get beat up, because the tough parts of town are tough parts of town because of reasons. Okay, people that go through deprivation. And they don't have, uh, they don't, deprivation without what, gosh dang it. Deprivation without, it's not reciprocation. Deprivation.
It's a live show, folks, so I'm allowed to have a brain fart. They're basically deprived without a refill. And that's my view on it. And it's going to come to me. I'm, I'm going to be in the bathroom like two days later. And I'm going to go, deprivation without restoration. Yes! <laughs> I did it. I made a sentence. On a serious note, this is, this is, uh, it's not sounding, it's not sounding completely correct here. If that is happening, then things may shift. Vladian and Colonel who carried Vlad's nuclear codes briefcase found perished, taken out, pop, pop. So this is the Colonel. Well, here. just pop, pop, not finished. Oh, so he didn't perish. So it says that the Vladian colonel who is in charge of carrying Vlad's uh, nuclear codes briefcase has been found pop-popped at his home near Moscow. Vadim Zamin, 53, is gravely ill and in intensive care. The nuclear control's briefcase uh, that, he, uh, that he held always accompanies the Vladian president. <clears throat> it says retired Federal Security Service or FSB Colonel Zimin had looked after it since it took uh, since he took on the role as aide de camp to former President Boris. He continued in the security service, rising to the role of colonel under the successor Vlad, but his precise role for the ex KGB spy is unclear. Zimin was found with uh, wounds in the kitchen of his flat in Kragnogorsk, Moscow region. So there's spy stuff going on all the time here. That was so crazy is that these spy movies with the born born identity and things like that, they're obviously not as uh, glamorous as the movies portray them, but there's stuff like this happening all the time. Uh, look at that one president that had 20 guys raid his house and, and take him out. Uh, I mean, just like stuff like this happens all the time. It's a reality outside of reality. Like, you know... Obviously, when the CIA and FSB and the the KGB and all and the M MI5 and all MI6 and stuff, it's like they do the craziest stuff in real life. These are the real life James Bonds, and this guy is essentially the right hand man to a former James Bond or or James Bond. But you know what I'm saying? This is crazy stuff that's going on, and all of this. This is the, his him getting taken out was probably part of a huge mission and nobody's ever going to know why i just think when we we see the tip of the iceberg every time we see something like this the guy is his the vlad's right hand man and he got popped something is going down and they think about that tomorrow that could be vlad vlad could be popped in his house vlad could have 400 soldiers you know pop into his house and do a private raid or they do some sort of celebratory event and they replace every person in the event or parade or something with crazy people with a, a private militia or something. Insane, insane. And before we talk about Vlad, of course, let's slip sinister master plan for American prisoners. Uh, Dex, let's get our next caller. It looks like we have Lisa calling and Lisa is going to talk about, of course, uh, Insights from a farmer regarding uh, Mr. Bates, Mr. Gilly Bates, purchasing farmland. Also, the crops are looking good in Iowa. Uh, will you get Lisa on the phone? Just want to point out, Solar Energy is doing a short-lived sale for up to $170 off on its solar generators. Uh, this, we truly believe people will end up either surviving through a disaster or making it a whole lot nicer. Now, what this is, is a solar generator, which means it can actually be charged as a battery bank from your wall or your car, but it can also be charged via portable uh, solar panels. It can also be charged by, uh, I guess, permanent ones as well. But the great thing is, is you can actually get uh, four foldable panels if you get the Flex 1500 and actually charge it in about four hours and have power, or you can keep it running while you are charging. Uh, what's even greater about this is that you can expand it. You can actually add a second battery, a third battery. You can add up to 96 batteries up to one unit. Now, these just one alone is, is good to get by. Uh, but again, if you get more, you'll have a, a limitless potential there as far as you can get up to 96 of them. 
You can also get mods. These all stack. You can get a mod that stacks right in the middle that actually allows you to uh, input three times as much. So for every one of those that you put in there, you can actually triple the input of solar panels. So instead of four, you can actually have 12 solar panels going into one input, uh, which is really, really awesome. That's the, what's so flexible about this. Uh, greatest part about solar uh, generators is they are absolutely silent. One is running my entire studio right now uh, with four panels and two batteries now. I started with one. Uh, but uh, everything here, my two power bars, my music gear, my lights, my router, everything is done. So if we lose power here, the show can keep going. Uh, so this is pretty cool. It's silent. Nobody's going to hear it from three blocks away. And it does not take gas, which at gas prices right now, don't need to tell you why. This is really awesome. Uh, ship date. It was a three-month wait, four-month wait at one point. Now the ship date is now just uh, a days away, weeks away. So again, make sure to get over there, marfuglenews.com slash energy. Make sure to use the code marfugal. You uh, get in while there's the sale and with that uh, short ship date. All right, uh, Dex, let's uh, have Lisa. Lisa, you are live on Marfugal News. What is going on? Um, standing outside, it's a really nice night out here in Iowa. Oh, it's it's beautiful here too. So, um, glad that it's nice out. That's always better than a storm or or just crappy weather. So, yeah. so you are Definitely. you a farmer? Is that? Yes, yes. We're considered a medium sized farmer in western Iowa, and um, you know, um. The number of acres that Mr. Bill owns does not really matter in the whole scheme of how much ground our land is in production in the United States because it's 800 and 895 million acres of food gets produced in the United States, and that is as of 2021. And if he only owns so 270,000 then that's not much out of... It's not. So basically, there's no. a whole lot more farmland to go around. Yeah, well, you're not. they're not going to make any more farm ground. I mean, you ain't going to make any more. But our yields get better every year because of development. So, but, you know, um, there's also rumors that goes around that crops are... Our farmers are getting paid to destroy their crops. That has, I've never, ever heard of that. That has never happened. Well, that is a TikTok thing, then, so it very well could be, you know, yes. somebody doing yes, it for I've views. Got, and there's, there's way too much uh, money invested in growing your crop out here. We buy our inputs a year in advance. So you're, you know, your food is pretty safe as of right now i mean it's what we're trying to get in for next year to plant a crop is what we're working on now getting our our fertilizer our seeds stuff like that it's just it's a it's not a oh we can just throw some seeds out in the field anymore this is a big business and and it takes a lot a lot of revenue to run a farm now can i ask you a question so, uh, and we're not are you conserving fertilizer are you doing things like the texas farmer that chimed in earlier um actually um my husband did not back off of fertilizer last year because it was still rather cheap he bought it rather cheap and it's better to put it on when it's cheaper and build up your fertilizer and build up your soils so they can produce more so yeah so everything has went up but most of your your big size farmers have their stuff purchased long before you know we before it's put in the ground what do you think have, have you talked to smaller farmers that are struggling right now well um the only ones i've really heard about is the ones in pennsylvania that I don't know really what they plant, but they were the ones, they're wet, 
And that does happen. You know, you can't give it in. But you do everything you can because otherwise crop insurance ain't going to pay. So you do everything you can to get that crop in. So, yeah. and then um, there was one smaller one that didn't have his diesel purchased for this year. So, and I don't know what the diesel situation is up in the eastern part of the United States. So we already have our diesel and everything purchased for our harvest. You know, it's it's something you have, I guess, you know, when the shortages of everything started, we started, you know, building the supply so that we had it for harvest. Now, is there a reason so, why, okay. before the shortages started, was there anything that prompted you to get prepped beforehand? Um, Not for, like, diesel. Diesel was the only thing that really concerned us was, you know, they said that they weren't going to make as much diesel, and you're deaf. We have newer equipment that requires your deaf, which is a shortage. There's 25% less deaf in the United States for this year. And uh, so that's the kind of stuff that we need to put in our diesel tractors and combines and to, for to meet code for environment for the environment you have to have these things yeah so as far as otherwise what it puts that, out we never really bought diesel ahead of time but you always bought your inputs ahead of time and you always to, bought your fertilizer and the seed okay ahead of time. okay so i was going to say for somebody who's not in the farming community inputs is fertilizer seeds things that Things that can be stored and then yes. used for next year. Yeah. Yeah. As yeah. far as like input, Things like you that, input uh, it in the ground. You you put right, it in the input. ground. So yeah. so I do yeah. have, I do have another couple questions here. So um, as a as a medium sized farmer, uh, is there any chance that uh, I, well I guess oh and you're in Iowa right? Right. Do you talk to a whole lot of farmers? Do you are you, do you have kind of a network of farmers that you talk to? Okay, yes. Um, I am. Let's see. I've been farming with my husband since 1984, so I've been through the worst, and I've been through the best. But in the last 30 years, you've seen some of the smaller farmers leave, or some have retired. And you're, if you're um, a good management, you're going to get bigger. But there's not a lot of huge corporate farmers. The corporate, the big, huge corporate farmers that are farming 15,000 acres are farming rented ground. We're a medium-sized farmer, and we own all of our land, which makes a, there's a lot of difference. You know, it's family-owned from generations. So there's a lot of difference in your size of farming. And then there's like, I have a neighbor who probably farms maybe 800 acres and has hogs. And that's what, that's how he does it. Now, can I ask, does your stuff go to stores? Are you, are you big enough to where your? No, actually our stuff either gets fed to cattle or hogs. Oh, okay. Or to, it will go to the ethanol plants. So ours is not like a consumable corn that you get out of a can. It's stuff to go to your cattle and hogs. Because we used to raise a lot of cattle and a lot of hogs, and we got out of it when my son got old enough to join and graduated, and he got into the farming operation and kind of took me. He kind of took over my place, and I'm just basically management and taxes. So, but I see what comes through, what stuff costs. It is much more expensive. But like I said, we did have all of our inputs bought a year in advance. Well, do you think so, everybody was able to do that, though? And if they didn't, what what position oh, would you be in? I think most of them, since we had a bumper crop last year, are in very good shape. 
So don't, we had don't. we were in a severe drought and we got a rain at the right time and we had the biggest crop we've ever had in our lives. Well, so, God bless that. Um, well, yeah, so, so the, your, of the, yours is regional, though. So I guess so for for the Iowa area and around there, basically you can speak. But I guess your message is that uh, that it's you're trying to put basically a positive thing and say that, hey, we're, we're going to be OK for now. You don't know what the future is. But for now, yeah. you're saying that a lot of farmers and how they usually do their work they most likely grabbed their stuff last year or grabbed it before and that we're going to be okay just for a, right. at least for a little bit longer. So I think that's a, I think that's yes, a great yes. positive message to put out. Yeah. And actually our fertilizer, what we're hearing, I just heard the other day, got a call from our, um, the guy that supplies our fertilizer and he, they believe that we're waiting because they think it will come down in price. So we're just kind of sitting back and holding on the fertilizer right now. So I don't know. I'm just, I guess what I'm saying is it looks really good. I guess I'm not too worried about our food production this year, you know, like you said, but next year you don't know, you know, we may not get a rain at the right time and you may be short of corn or beans, but most farmers around here, they're going to feed anybody. We're the only business that buys retail and sells wholesale. So <laughs> that's kind of, of a joke in the farming community around here. So, yeah, it's hard to work with big companies because it's always worth more. Their stuff's always worth more. So, yeah, as of, I guess I'm not real concerned about food. I think you'll have plenty of meat and plenty of stuff um to eat i am i mean i don't know i well lisa I'm just trying to say it's not as bad as what they think what they say it's not it's not that bad well i'm glad i'm glad to actually get some perspective from a, a medium-sized farmer and again i bet you to anybody here would be like that's a big farm uh but you're you're when you talk about the big big farms you're talking about the corporate crazy thousands of acres uh land like you said that are rented and and yeah. propagated yeah, by these giant companies friends that that are considered corporate that farm eighteen thousand acres but it's all custom farmed where they customize they farm it for a certain farmer or they rent it from somebody so they're covering a lot of acres and um but they have a lot of a lot more um hired help to help them out where we as a medium-sized farmer can do it between the three of us yeah no so, I, I especially with, hire some. with tractors and with the different equipment that you can cover a lot of ground well lisa we're out of yeah, time you're, you're tri- but i wanted to okay. say i All wanted right. to say thank you for calling in today um again if there's one more thing you want to say though go feel free to go ahead well, I was just going to say that with the the equipment we have now today, it's in, you know, a tractor is a half a million and a combine is almost three quarters of a million dollars now. That's so insane. It's, 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 it's a business. It's not no, no easy deal. So but the farmers will do whatever they can to feed everybody. I mean, that's just the way they are. Well, so just to get into a business like that, you're looking at a million bucks or something like that or more. Wow. Yes, we took a million dollars to start our son. Wow. Well, so, well think, and that's just a basic fact. That's crazy. Like so, so many people look at that or used to look at it. Now a million dollars isn't what it used to be. Uh, kind of like the Austin Powers, yeah. like, oh, we want $1 million. And they're like, You're that's getting, not yeah. much. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. Um, that was back in 07 when we started him. And that's what it took back then. Well, that's a lot more. Then it's so, probably a lot more than that now. It's probably $2 million. Yeah. But we're lucky because, you know, this is a generational farm. So stuff got passed down from generation to generation to generation. So... Well, I was thank- raised on a farm, so that's all I've ever known. And going to a city is just amazing to me. Going south of the border is a lot of fun, too. So, 
Well, I bet driving in the city is no time. driving in the city is no fun. I, I have yeah. family that live out in the out in the country, and they do not like coming to the city. Well, um, Lisa, I would love to meet you sometime. <laughs> if I'm in Iowa, can I stop by and 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 roam your field? <laughs> yes. All right. Yes, well, actually, um, my husband gives more rides to city people every year because they're just they they don't really understand how it works. They thought we were still out here hand picking everything. Well, I would love to. Uh, so, yeah, I, really- at some point, I would love to interview farmers like you and and go through and see what's actually happening. That would be really cool. Well, uh, Lisa, yeah. thank yeah, so thank you, site, thank so. you for your perspective, Lisa. Alrighty. And it was nice meeting you. And we will uh, uh, again. Nice uh, we will be praying for your your crops and the the <laughs> rain to stop at the right time. All right, uh, that was Lisa uh, from Iowa, and what a sweetheart! And uh, I think that that in general that the positive message of like you know it's I, the one thing I wonder though is the farmers that did not that aren't able to do that to buy their inputs a year early that are not generational that are possibly starting out uh, or the uh, farmers that are are either you know renting their land or something like that and these things happen or they make a mistake and then insurance crop insurance doesn't cover it it, there's a lot of these things happen and what we're hearing is slowly one by one these farms are getting knocked out by one thing or another Uh, i'm almost worried she does the stuff that actually feeds the animals i just wonder how other parts of it are doing other parts of the country that farms obviously i was a big big farming state um, but you know, like I wonder what about the processing plants? What there's, there's a whole chain of where this stuff goes. And if you take one link out, it screws up the whole system. And I think they, uh, and I, I think they figured out how to do that almost on purpose, it seems. But, and then we have Vlad World Let's Slip Sinister Master Plan for American Prisoners. Uh, Dex, I'm going to have you talk about that. I do have a, a quick couple uh, articles that I need to load, Dex. Uh, I'm going to actually, uh, there was a couple things that I wanted to add in, which I believe um, I can get on over here. So hold on. Okay, no problem. So, uh, yeah, let's talk a little bit about this. So, as we've mentioned, there's uh, been you. Uh, the UK has had numerous um, people that have been detained in the UKR uh, for participation, and now recently, the US. I think we're up to three, maybe four, uh, that have been detained um, and for uh, the conflict in UKR. Not they're doing it on their own. They're not acting necessarily on behalf of the U.S. They're just U.S. citizens that have gone in and worked with the UKR side um, against uh, Vlad's side. So they've been captured. Um, what this, th- what what's going on here? And this is a rather long article. So I'm going to actually tell you if you're reading it, just make sure you don't skip the end because the end is what's the most important part. And I'm going to actually jump to that where it says host uh, Vladimir Solovyov pondered out loud quote. How will the U.S. and U.K. react if the Donsk People's Republic sentences all foreign mercenaries, Americans and British, to uh, to be non-living anymore and actually carries out those uh, X, if you know what I mean, Cushions, right? So he basically said, well, how will they feel if if we actually do that? And then later, as they go on and, and have this conversation on air uh, and what is done before, what if it's done before the um, – the, the big event that we have coming up in November, would it be done for political purposes, et cetera, et cetera? They went on, but it ended with Estevaf grimly emphasizing that Americans and the British started this fire and they have to burn in it. So it sounds like the rhetoric and just for what it's worth, this is coming from the, the talking heads, the Ganda, uh, the strong Ganda pieces that are coming from Vlad's country, right? But it seems like there's a very, very strong uh, negative sentiment towards Americans, British, and, and others, or basically anybody in NATO, for that matter, a fact. But you know, this this is kind of strong again. We've seen the, we've seen these uh, come from them about you know warnings around you know the use of nukes and taking out East and West Coast with a handful of you know hypersonics and things like that. But this uh, this last little bit about you know saying that we're going to let them burn and what if we actually carry through with the um the the 
the the sentence that that they are claiming they're going to put on these people, both Americans and British. So they would unalive kind of them thing. the day before we do our congressional bop, 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 drop the 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 bell in the box. And then it says we need to intensify our efforts to drag Americans into it. America and Great Britain have to be incinerated in this conflict. Those are the words. Pretty strong. And huh? then Americans and the British started this fire and they have to burn in it. That's there. I mean, I, I know that their media does this, but I mean, like every single day there is something and it's strong. This is what their people think. This is what uh, think about the people that are consuming this content. Their whole country well, wants us to burn. Well, let me ask At you that. Let me ask you this. That, Have you ever heard our media make a statement like this? And you could pick any part of our media that you may like, or you could pick any part of our media you don't like, right? That you might think would would make something, you know. Has anybody ever on our side ever made something so outlandish to the other side? Like, I mean, that's that's pretty grim. Well, they, yeah, well, not like this. There was the one uh, congressman or senator that said that, you know, I think we should do a first strike, you know, I, well, I'm not about, or maybe he even said he was like, well, I'm not, a, the, yeah, the we're no not beyond too. a first strike. Yeah. yeah, exactly. That's about as far as I've ever, but that's not like, oh, well, you know, we need to, burn. we need to let, like, we, we need, need to, to burn yeah. them. Yeah, this is, this is pretty extreme. And uh, by the way, I, I should rephrase that. I don't think everyone in, in Vlad country hates us, but I bet you this is what they're consuming. Uh, the people that are watching this channel, it's grinding into their head. This is, I mean, this is the same as the Ganda that's coming out here. It's, it's Ganda on both sides, uh, making us hate the other side vitriol. Uh, maybe it's all planned. Who knows? Well, I mean, a lot of yes, it's planned certainly. over years, decades, and they're resetting everything, but you know, UK are warns, uh, Vlad, of massive missile strikes after U.S. rockets arrived. So UKR basically told them, like, we just got our U.S. rockets. We're going to get you. Just wanted to hit that. They got the, the high-mobility artillery rocket systems from the U.S., the HIMARS, and they basically warned, we're going to use them. So this is going to be a tit-for-tat thing. They're going to do it, and then Vlad and their media and everybody else is going to respond and go that was u.s you know uh u.s equipment and they they hit us uh, i expect in the next three days four days that some very important thing is going to get hit in vlad country that's just my prediction and then nasa suddenly aborts moon rocket test with 29 seconds on the clock left and i've seen this before in fact one of the ones i was watching with ilea that was launching out of florida it was like I think we were all watching it live, and I think I think other people. I think Ilya was watching it. Survival game now, but and uh, this was again abruptly aborted the rehearsal launch for its massive mega moon rocket, which will one day return humans to the moon's surface twenty seconds ahead of schedule on Monday, with just twenty nine seconds left on the countdown clock. Uh, agency officials cited. Uh, liquid hydrogen leak within the rocket as the primary reason for the rehearsal's abrupt ending. Uh, this wasn't, was this thing made by, was this made by NASA? Was it made by uh, SpaceX? Was there any, is this rocket actually made at all by SpaceX? Do we know? Uh, I do not know. Either way, I just wonder, because we just read that uh, piece on how they talked about, uh, they were worried about SpaceX ruining the path uh, to the ISS. This isn't the same launch, I believe, or the same launch pad. Either way, um, I just wonder, like, what happened there? And that's the second time. The previous time, it was... I feel like it was... Uh, in fact, I don't even think it's the second time. I think this is, like, the fourth time. And it's like, they'll literally be launching and, and they'll be counting down, and then they'll stop it. So... We'll follow that. I just wanted to throw that in there. I thought that was pretty interesting. If you have an idea on that, let it, put it in the chat below. And then if you have an interesting call, if you have an interesting story that you think you can get into about under 10 minutes, let me know. If you have an interesting story that could be an hour-long show, let me know. Uh, but, uh, of course, email me, uh, adam at marfugalnews.com. DM me on Twitter at marfugal or uh, get dex at marfugalnews.com. 
Uh, he helps me produce the show. So if you want to uh, get a hold of him as well, that would be great. Uh, let us uh, let us tell your story. All right, and then everybody that's been here uh, the whole time, Bible Talk Triple Seven. I think the UKR conflict was a transition air or a translation air. Uh, the Vlads paint Z's on military equipment, so they are the Z's, and UKR are not Z's. And then we've got, Air, thank you, Bible Talk. Ariel Purvey Perspective says, hey, Fugal fam, hope every, everyone is well. Marf Fugal News, the only news Mike and I use. Marf uh, could tell Mike Pena has the best part of my day. Mike uh, Pena is the best part of her day. Uh, Big Easy Patriot and, of course, everybody else that popped in during the show. Name uh, Nana of Montana. Thank you, Nana of Montana. You didn't have to do that. Thank you so much for your generous support of the show. Thanks, Adam Dex and Mods. I will have to rewatch and have to run. May God bless all. Nana of Montana, I really do appreciate you think uh, supporting us. Uh, again, you don't have to be that generous. I appreciate that. Uh, we appreciate you supporting Independent. Um, cannot say enough thank yous to that. So thank you. Uh, Kano's kid. You can look up documents on Harp that shows that they can project an image on the ionosphere by heating it up. Watching about thirty minutes behind. Uh, Kano's kid. That's okay. When you do get get, uh, get caught up, thanks. Uh, thank you for your support. And two, very interesting stuff with that system. And yes, I know there's a lot that could be done uh, by man. P Ben or P B Ben, P B N. Uh, thank you so much for your support and everyone else that has popped in today. Um, Dex, we have a contest, a giveaway more more so, uh, for Off Grid. Do you want to go over that now? Absolutely. And I just want to double check because I know I've been on the phones. Did you hit um, Cynthia Lynn in the jet? Oh, my goodness. No, I was about to pop up D Live. So, Cynthia Lynn. Holy moly. Love to the entire Fugle fam. Cynthia Lynn, we've missed you. I know that you've had, obviously you've got family stuff and everybody's got family stuff and stuff going on. So I really do appreciate you and thank you to the DLive crew. I was actually uh, popping everybody up. Chef Lee, Moxie One, Jordan B. Bear, Sky House, The End Is Near, and of course Red Butterfly. Thank you. Cynthia Lynn, that's actually probably the first one over there. Uh, I really love the DLive crew. I hope DLive is heading. Uh, I, I just really... I'm really praying for uh, D Live to keep stay around and, and be successful. Uh, again, I, I don't know whatever happened with the chess thing. Like there was all sorts of uh, things that went on, but I'm uh, just praying that that uh, everything is okay. Skyhouse Jordan B Bear, thank you. End is near again. Skyhouse everybody over there, thank you guys for sticking with us for years now. Priscilla R, another person who has stuck with us for a very long time. Cynthia Lynn, again, that, I believe that will make you the top supporter for the week. So thank you so much. I appreciate that. And uh, God bless you. Thank you, everybody. And then uh, let's get over to, to winning some free stuff. Yeah, absolutely. Adam, hey, everyone, go to marfuglenews.com. If you're on YouTube, open the description and click on show notes. It'll take you right here to this page. If you're going to the website, look for the thumbnail for today or tomorrow or yesterday or the day before any of these, click on them and you'll get to the show notes. You'll get to see everything we're talking about. But the most important thing you need to see up front is the off-grid bag giveaway. Make sure you enter that. You want to win this. It's a $380 bag backpack holds your laptop, your cell phone, your tablet, your keys, and it does it all in individual Faraday bags. It'll store two days worth of gear. Um, I mean, like this is a, this is a cream of the crop of bags. So uh, go take a look and make sure you get uh, entered to win that. You can do it multiple days. I want to say there's 12 days left when I last looked earlier today. So um, when you scroll down and you get, you'll go past all the articles and information we just covered tonight, that's the bibliography of everything we've done. You're going to get to this net, the next section that says uh, overflow and web content. That is the rest of the story. So lots of updates going on there. Updates. We talked a little bit earlier tonight about what's happening with the Supreme Court. There's still big decisions coming out later this week. Lots of updates on who's thinking what and what they're what they're preparing for. Um, definitely more political stuff in this area, uh, specifically around the events that happen in November's every couple of years. So there'll be some updates there. Uh, a movie update from um, the movie Lightyear. Uh, some other updates going on around um, <clears throat> Netflix. Uh, as well as uh, there was someone else. Oh, uh, Elon was in the news as well. He's always in the news, but 
you know, these, these things that are happening with the companies and what they're saying with the economy. So go take a look. You'll get that and so much more uh, over on marfuglenews.com. So go to the website, click on the thumbnail for the show. If you're on YouTube, it's so easy. Open that description and click on show notes. It's the first link right there. And of course, uh, thank you to everybody like Keith Dyke, Survival Living, early on in the show with support. And then, uh, yes, Bible Talk, I no, I didn't. And while he was talking about off-grid, I, you said that not Zs. Got it. And I said it twice. I said it three times, technically. So, yeah, uh, hopefully that doesn't get hit. What's crazy is um, that is, yeah, there's a huge thing going on there. And over there, their media, I wonder why uh, you can't get their media here, right? Well, because they're actually, they did put out some pieces that do uh, confirm some of that. And I, I thought that was pretty interesting. Uh, the real ones, right? The the Neo, but not the Matrix. All right. Thank you, guys. And thank you for checking out Overflow, checking out everything else. Thank you over on D Live. Thank you, everybody that popped in tonight. Cynthia Lynn, thank you so much uh, once again. And Nana of Montana, thank you. Uh, thank you to a special thank you if you watching the replay. Thank you, Iris Rebel. Thank you for your support. I appreciate you. Ariel's Pervy Perspectives, Bible Talk, and everyone else that is here every single day. Uh, that's what uh, comes now. It's the shoutro. It's not an outro. It's not a shout out. It's a shoutro. It's where I say thank you to the people that matter most. You, especially the, the folks in the chat. Uh, again, thank you. Love you. Be safe. Be prepared. And Marf out. Big thank you to Nana Montana and, of course, the beautiful Cynthia Lynn. Thank you, everybody, that has popped in. I'm going to head over to the chat. Let's uh, give me your favorite word of the day. Favorite word of the day. Jeff, Jeff Seven, Derek Hartman, Chance Paladin, thank you for modding. Thank your mods. They have done a great job. Jason, thank you for popping in. G uh, Gia, Gaia Watcher, Carolina Cheryl. Adam. What? That is cool. How did you do that with your uh, your name? You got the different font. That's cool. Android Architect, My Blue Sky, Priscilla R, Marfool's Gold, Storm Rider, Marfool's Gold. By the way, you've been around for a long time. Thank you for sticking around with us. Stealth Mode, Kimria, WIS Gen, Bible Talk Triple Sevens, and one AZ. Thank you guys for getting us over three thousand today. Thank you so much. Blessed to have everybody here. Charlie sixty four, Poco Loco. Oh man, what a what a great group of people.
survival game. Uh, Marfugal Jams is not monetized whatsoever. It is just for uh, the stuff. It's just for the, uh, what do you call it? Just for the, the silly music that you guys listen to. All right. Oh, that's why. <laughs> 